welcome all. This is Pooja Soros and in this session we are going to understand a very fundamental concept in mathematics which is percentage. Let me warn you that if you have not gone through the calculation technique session probably you will find this session as a new session because we have covered a very basic concept of converting percentage to ratio in that session. So please go through that before you start this or focus on the slide number 2 when we go through this session. So let's understand why are we studying this topic. Yes, we deal with percentages every day. It's a very routine thing in our life. When you are in school, your results, your scores are displayed in percentages or your grades are calculated based on percentages. The food content on the packages which you buy denotes that it has got 6% of carbohydrates, 20% of fat, so on and so forth. The stock market falls up, rises up every day in terms of percentages. The currency falls, the economics, everything is based on percentages. So, you come across this terminology or this concept on a routine basis. So, let's understand how do we apply this in the competitive exams. Today, in this session, we are going to understand certain concepts and certain formulas which help you to crack the question faster. Yes, it is going back to school, but at the same time, we are just cutting down those longer methods into the shorter ones. Now, let's understand the terminology as per cent. As we say per dozen or we say per student, similarly, it is per cent, that is every hundred. As the term says, Percent is just the ratio or a comparison with the base as 100. So when I say 73%, 73 is compared to 100. So let's understand in details how this percentage as a topic or as a concept we come across in the competitive exams. Let's have a look at this table. Now this table talks a lot about the conversion from ratio to percentages. Observe carefully. In the first look, you may look at it as a table. But if you observe, there are certain terms which are connected. Observe the first column. Half means 50%. So half of anything can be denoted in terms of percentages as 50%. One fourth of any object or any item would be 25%. So just imagine that a person saying that one fourth of my salary is spent on my luxury goods. He means that 25% of his salary he is spending on the luxury goods. But if someone says one sixth, one seventh, one eleventh, one fifteenth, can you imagine a number? Probably at this stage, no. Because we use these ratios as half, three-fourth, one-fourth, one-third on a daily basis in our routine language. But you need a little more practice and memory to keep the other ratios in mind. So here are they. Just follow the column 1 of this table. If half means 50, one-fourth is half of that which is 25%, 1 eighth is further half of that which is 12.5% and taking it even further to that 1 16th is half of 1 eighth. So it becomes 6.25. So if you remember the start of it, I am sure you will remember throughout till the end till 1 16th. Another way would be or another term importantly would be one third. If you remember one third, I am sure you will be able to remember one sixth, one twelfth, one ninth. So let's start. One third 
is 33.33 percent. Now one third is 33.33 which also tells me that it is a recurring decimal but we stop at two digits. Similarly, if I take half of one third it is one sixth and half of 33.33 would be 16.66 recurring. Let us take further half of 1 6 it is 1 12th and half of 16.66 is 8.33. So, if you follow this process I am sure that if you remember 1 12 1 by 2 you will remember till 1 16 if you remember 1 third you will remember till 1 15 and there are certain more ratios like 1 by 5 1 by 10 which are related terminologies. I would like to mention two pairs interestingly one is 1 7th and 1 14th and second one is 1 by 9 and 1 by 11. Just observe them closely 1 by 7 is equal to or I would say in ratio 1 by 7 converts to percentage as 14.28 percent. Similarly, 1 by 14 converts to 7.14 percent. Now, if you observe 1 by 7 is equal to 14.28. So, it gives me 7 is double 14, 14 is double 28. Now, there is no relation in actual numbers, but it is just a technique to remember that 1 by 7 involves the multiples of 7 itself. Similarly, 1 by 9 is equal to 11.11 an interesting number 11.11 and 1 by 11 is equal to 9.09. .09. So, I would call them as a complementary product partner. What do we mean by that? When you are finding from percentage to ratio we are finding the product partner which will make the multiplication as 100. Let us observe 1 by 4 gives you 25 percent. In simple terms it means that 4 into 25 gives me 100. Similarly, 1 by 11 is 9.09 .09, which tells me that 11 into 9.09 .09 is approximately 100. So, if you come across any ratio which you do not know or which is not part of this table, you simply need to find out a number or a complementary product partner to make the product as 100. Moving on next, we will be understanding more concepts on percentages which you will come across in different questions in your competitive exams. First. Now, calculating percent if you understand is nothing but a ratio multiplication by 100. But if I have to calculate the percentage change either increase or decrease, I need to use one of these formulae. If it is a percentage change in terms of increasing the value, then it is the final value minus the initial value divided by initial value into 100. Something to observe in this formula would be here the value increases hence the final value will be more than the original value or the initial value. Hence the difference is between final and initial value which will give you the positive answer. The base will be always the original value on which the change has happened and multiplying by 100 gives you the percentage. Applying the same technique to understand percentage decrease, let us find a formula for the same. Here observe that the final value is decreasing as compared to the initial value. Hence, the initial value will be greater than the final value. So, the formula slightly reverses and says the percentage decrease is initial value minus the final value divided by initial value into 100. Observe the base 
or the comparison with always with the initial value or the original value and to find a percentage we multiply by 100 so that's about the percentage change let's understand another concept on percentage now here we understood percentage change in terms of increasing or decreasing value there's another terminology which you may come across it is absolute change when the terminology used is absolute change it tells you that forget the signs forget the difference whether it is positive or negative it is only the change or the difference hence percentage change in terms of increasing value or the decreasing value doesn't matter it is just the absolute value change for example if the value of the article changes from 50 to 60 the change is rupees 10 or else other way around if the value of the item changes from rupees 50 to rupees 40 here also the change is rupees 10 hence in both the cases the absolute change is rupees 10 so this is the terminology which you should know to solve the answers next is a slight variation or often a confusing terminology which is percent point change now percent point change is just the difference between two percentages and it is not the ratio as compared to any other number just an example to illustrate this further if the currency rises from 50 to 55 just an example if the price of wheat increased last month by 10 percent and this month by another 12 percent as compared to the original price then what is the percent point change the percent point change here is the difference between the two percent in two different months hence the answer would be as simple as 12 percent minus 10 percent so that may be a slightly confusing terminology used in the question so be careful if they are asking you about percent point change or percent change let's understand one more concept on percentages which is the successive percent change let's take an example if you go to a shop with an offer saying that it has got x percent of the offer and you further bargain and become successful in pulling down the value by another y percent what is the total effective discount i would say what would be the total effective discount which you get yes you would require a calci to understand what would be the effective discount of x and y if you do not know this formula let's see now the successive discount is understanding about the effect of the two successive percentages when i use the terminology discount the value decreases and if i use the terminology change it must have increased or decreased hence if i have to understand if the value has increased the formula is a percent plus b percent plus a b by 100 so this is the effective percent where a and b are the two successive percentages of offers secondly if the question is asking you about the successive discount discounting means the value decreases if the first discount offer is a percent and second discount offer is b percent then the effective discount would be a plus b minus a into b divided by 100 if you observe there is a 
minor change of sign from plus to minus. So be careful when they are asking you whether it is a successive percent increase or a successive percent discount. Now percent the concept remaining the same we apply this to different practical examples like calculating the population or calculating the depreciation. Let's see how. Results on population. Let the population of a town be P now and suppose it increases at the rate of R percent per annum then population after n years is equal to P in bracket 1 plus R divided by 100 raised to n. Now, if you want to find out the population n number of years ago, we have to just reverse this and the formula would be population n years ago is equal to P divided by 1 plus R divided by 100, 1 plus R divided by 100 raised to n. Now, if you observe this is a formula which is very much related to the simple interest compound interest chapter. Yes, this is the exact copy of the compound interest or the application of the compound interest. So, I would say that the percentage and compound interest used together will lead to this formula which is a formula on population. So, let us see the result if we apply the same concept on depreciation. In simple terms depreciation means the value of the asset goes on decreasing every year or as the time passes by certain x percent. Let us see applying the percentages to find out the depreciation of a machine. Let the present value of a machine be P and the depreciation charged on the machine for n number of years would be R percent per annum. Then we get the formula which says the depreciation that is the depreciated value of the machine after n years is P 1 minus R by 100 raised to n. The only change here is the sign minus because the depreciation decreases the value of the machine and in case of population the population goes on increasing every year on or based on the previous year. Similarly, if we have to find out the value of the machine n years ago knowing the depreciation value for the day. Then we apply this concept which looks like value of the machine n years ago is P divided by 1 minus R by 100 raised to n. So, this is the application second application in fact of the compound interest formula. This first application was in population which has got a positive or a plus sign plus r divided by 100 and this has got minus sign. That is the minor change to be observed. Let us see another concept where you would come across the comparison of two people or two objects in terms of one being more than the other or the other being less than the first one. So, how do you find out? Of course, you have a conventional and a traditional method by going step by step to find out the answers. But here, if you remember this, I am sure you will save much more of your time in getting the answers right. So, let us see the formula. If A and B are two values and if A is R percent more than B, then definitely B is less than A by how much? The formula is R divided by 100 plus R into 100 percent. 
Now, this also gives me the derivative formula which says if a is r percent less than b, then b is more than a by r divided by 100 minus r into 100 that is percentage. Now, let us apply the same concept to a practical question or to a question in your competitive exam. So, you would come across a question something like this where there are two people involved where their salaries are compared with certain percentages given and one of the salaries is mentioned and the question is asking either someone else's or the second person's salary or the percentage. Let us have a look at this question. Ashok's salary is 40 percent more than Biju's salary. Then Biju's salary is less than Ashok's salary by what percent? Now this is a very clear cut percent comparison between two people. Here the comparison is just based on percentages. None of the numbers are mentioned in respect to what the actual salary is. So, how do you find out? Yes, we need to apply the concept we just discussed. Let us see how the solution would be. The solution here is the application of the very first formula wherein A salary is 40 percent more than Biju's salary. So, here R is 40 which gives us the equation 40 divided by 100 plus r into 100 which gives us 40 divided by 140 into 100 which gives us the ratio 2 by 7. Now, 1 by 7 if you remember is 14.28. So, 2 by 7 would be exactly double of that that is 28.56 and that would be the answer for this question. Let us have a final tip or a trick for this which is just the comparison in terms of equation. At times you may come across the equations like this wherein they are talking of a percent of B. So, B percent is how much of A? So, it will look something like this. A percent of B is equal to B percent of A. Let us see the expansion of the same. The expansion is just take an example with numbers substituting A and B. So, 34 percent of 79 is 79 percent of what? If I expand 34 percent becomes 34 divided by 100 of is multiplication. So, 34 divided by 100 into 79 is equal to 79 divided by 100 into something and then something has to be none other than 34. This explains us why A percent of B is equal to B percent of A. So, keep this in mind as one of those finest trick or a very small tip for you to understand in calculations of percentages. If you have understood, let us summarize what we have done or what we have covered in terms of percentage. First and foremost, very importantly ratio to percentage. If you understand this table and this ratio, the comparisons, your calculations will be faster. Not only when it is 1 by 7 or 1 by 6 or 1 by 12, but also in cases the ratio used is maybe 2 by 3, 5 by 7, 9 by 8, so on so forth. So, do remember this table. Secondly, we also went through the percentage change formula, where important thing to remember is irrespective of the change, whether it is increasing or decreasing, you always compare it with the initial value or the original value and then multiply by 100. There is a terminology called as absolute change which is nothing but simply a change. The sign does not matter.
increase, decrease, doesn't matter. It is just the change between two values. Thirdly, we also dis discussed about the percent point change and percent change. Finally, we also had this application of percentages in place wherein we applied the successive percent change or the discount offers which we discussed. We applied the percent formula to population, to depreciation and comparison of two people or two values where one of the values is greater than the other value. And the last step for the concept would be any time if there is any statement or a question asking you if A percent of B is equal to B percent of what then the answer is simply the same number A. Now let us get into a few examples so that you understand the application of the concepts just discussed. First example, a batsman scored 110 runs which included 3 boundaries and 8 sixes. What percent of his total score did he make by running between the wickets? Now this is a very simple example which you can connect to as it is all about cricket. You also understand the 4s and 6s can be calculated by multiplying that by 4 and 6. So the only difference is just finding out the number of 4s and 6s and the remaining runs. So let's solve it step by step and reach the final answer. Step 1. The number of runs made by running would be the difference between 110 and 4s and 6. That can be calculated as 110 minus 3 boundaries that means 3 into 4 plus 8 sixes so 8 into 6 which gives me a total of 60. So 110 minus 60 gives me a number which is 50. So 50 runs were made other than boundaries and sixes. So the question is what percent of his total score did he make by running between the wickets? Now, if I were to convert this statement to an equation, it shows something like this. So, the required percentage is 50 divided by 110 into 100, which gives me the answer 45, 5 by 11 percent. So, that was a very simple example on percentage, which applies to cricket, where the 4s and 6s are to be calculated. Let's have another look on question number 2. The question says, a fruit seller had some apples. He sells 40% of apples and still has 420 apples. Originally, he had how many apples? Now here the question is asking you that he has already sold 40% of it. So, he is still left with what percent? Yes. He is still left with 60 percent and that 60 percent is equal to 420 apples. The solution can be lengthier if you actually find out what can be the 40 percent of the total subtract it and to get 420. So let's form a very easy equation and find the solution for the same. The solution would be if the fruit seller has already sold 40 he is left with 60%. So 60% of the total apples, assuming apples as A or X, is equal to 420. Hence, the total number of apples can be 420 into 100 divided by 60, which gives me the answer as 700 apples. Now, this was a very simple example based on the percentages wherein 1% is given to you but the answer is actually asking you some other percent. So that is the reason be careful in such questions as they may be tricky in verbally framing them. Question number 3. What percent of numbers 
from 1 to 70 have 1 or 9 in a unit's digit. The solution for this question will look something like this. Now to find out 1's and 9's in unit's place, we can check the range of every 10. For example, 1 to 10, we have two such numbers, 1 and 9. Between 11 to 20, we have another set of 2, 11 and 19. So all these sets of 10 will have 2 in each one of them because they are asking us only about the units place. That's the reason we can safely say that in 7 sets of 10, from 1 to 10, 10 to 20, so on till 60 to 70, we'll have 2 numbers in each set. So in all, we'll have 14 such numbers. But the question doesn't stop here. It is asking you the percentage. The percentage would be the 14 numbers divided by total number of numbers between 1 to 70, which is 70. So 14 divided by 70 gives me a ratio of 1 by 5. And 1 by 5 is nothing but 20%. Another example on percentages would be just the comparison of two or having the equations using certain symbols or codes. Here, the question is not necessarily a word problem, but is asking you just the comparison between two. The question would look something like this. If A is equal to X percent of Y and B is equal to Y percent of X, then which of the following is true? Here, they are giving you the question based on comparison of two values in terms of certain codes, A and B. So, no numbers are involved. So, this statement remains true irrespective of the numbers involved. You need to remember these statements and you can apply it even though the value of A and B goes in thousands or lakhs. Let's have a look at the solution. X percent of Y is expressed in an equation as X divided by 100 into Y. And Y percent of X is also expressed as Y divided by 100 into X. That's the reason you understand that both the equations are just a difference in presentation otherwise the value of them is same that's the reason a is equal to b here if i take the value of a as a certain number i'll get the value of b as same so here it is not based on the value of a or b but it is based on relationship which is a percent of B is equal to B percent of A. Here A and B are just replaced by X and Y. So this is the same concept given to you in the form of question in a twisted format. Let's have a look on the next question. The question is, if 20 percent of A is equal to B, then B percent of 20 is the same as. Now this is a very simple equation asking you certain percentages wherein A and B has to be found out. Let's have a look at the solution. The 20% of A is equal to B can be denoted as 20 by 100 A is equal to B and B percent of 20 can be denoted as b by 100 into 20. Hence, 20 by 100 a into 1 by 100 into 20 is equal to 4 by 100 of a, which is nothing but 4 percent of a. Hence, the answer is very clear, the option a example which is a word problem on percentage. Now, these are the common questions which will come across in your competitive exams. Let's have a look at the question. 
question says a student multiplied a number by 3 by 5 instead of 5 by 3. What is the percentage error in the calculation? This is a very common mistake which a student does. Multiplication by a wrong number. Here the fractions are involved which makes the question a little more complex than the integers. But let's solve it using the same concept of finding what can be the original value and what is the deviation from the original value. So the solution for this would be let the number involve the x. The error is the multiplication of the number by 3 by 5 instead of 5 by 3. Hence the error is the difference between the two values which is 5 by 3 x minus 3 by 5 x. By cross multiplying you will get this as 16 by 15 x. Now this is the deviation from the original value. Hence the error calculation in terms of percentage can be calculated as 16x divided by 15 as the error divided by 5x by 3 as the original number. When you actually multiply it or expand this, this would look something like this. 16x divided by 15 into 3 by 5x into 100 percent. If you cross multiply and further solve it, simplify it, we get the answer as 64 percent. And that is how this question can be solved. Remember, the error is nothing but the deviation from the original value. So we are applying the concept of final value minus initial value divided by initial value and multiply that by 100 to get the percentage. Let's have a look at the next question. In an election between two candidates, one got 55% of the total valid votes. 20% of the votes were invalid. If the total number of votes was 7500, the number of valid votes that the other candidate got was. Now this is a very practical scenario where the candidates are involved in an election. There is a percentage difference and someone wins over the other. Now here the total number of votes are also given as well as the comparison between two candidates is also given. So how this can be solved? Let's see. The number of valid votes is just the 80% of 7500 as 20% of the votes were invalid. So 80% of 7500 gives you 4 by 5 of 7500 that is equal to 6000. Now out of the 6000 valid votes polled by the other candidate is 45% of this. Hence 45 divided by 100 into 6000 will give me the answer as 2700. Now this is the answer to the question. If you calculate 55% for the first person, you need to take one more step by subtracting this from 6000. Hence to avoid two steps, we directly find out that if A has got 55% of the votes, of the valid votes in fact, then B has got remaining 45. So we directly calculated 45% of the votes. I am sure by now you understand how and where we can use percentages in terms of its basic concepts. Few more questions to go. Probably this is the last one which we will be taking for this session. The question says, the population of a town increased from 1,75,000 to 2,62,500 in a decade. The average percent increase of population per year is. This is the direct application of the formula which we have learned. This is a question based on increasing numbers in population based on a formula on population. So let's have a look at the solution. 
Now, increase in 10 years is the difference between the current population and the previous population, which gives us the number 87500. And the increase percent is the comparison of this number with the initial value. Hence, 87500 divided by 175000 into 100 is equal to exactly the half that is 50 percent but the question is asking you what is the average percent increase be careful when the word comes average here the answer doesn't stop but we have one more step to follow which is finding the average now 50 percent growth is over a time period of 10 years that is a decade now the question is average percent so, to get the average person, we divide this answer by 10 because it is per year. So, we need to divide that by a decade. So, 50% divided by 10 is 5%. I hope at the end of this session, you must have understood more about percentages. You must have changed your perspective towards percentage. The application of certain formulas help you to get the answer faster but remember one thing all these formulas are the derivatives of the longer process so you may know the longer process or the conventional process but the shortcuts help you to understand or get the answers in a faster way also important thing is that when you catch up the speed do not lose the accuracy Hence, apply the right formulas at the right places. These are the limited formulas for the percentages. If you happen to know all of them, probably you will get more derivatives from these and you can solve much more variations which may be the combination of percentage, interest, profit and loss, so on and so forth. So make your percentages stronger which will increase your probability of scoring high in the math section. Thank you.